try to make an egg. Ugh. So I decided to make a series of shit designs on a Beneteau when sailing offshore. Shit design number one. Number two. We're crossing the Atlantic. It is the last day offshore until we arrive in Mindelo on the Cape Verde Islands. That is the first leg of the Atlantic crossing. And it's horrible. The forecast looked quite good on departure, but a week in, things have changed for the worse. This part of the Atlantic on this course is na ah. But it makes for a nice video. Subscribe and join us on the ocean. These were most definitely the worst 24 hours of my life. And I didn't even do the worst shifts. So we're not making that much speed. I kind of want it to just be over. <laughs> We've got a third region in Maine. Our Genoa is basically a storm jib. We're still doing five knots. And last night we were still surfing at 10 knots or more with that single sign on. Time. Alex uh, went to sleep around three at night. He was just so done. He also has an infected eye now. I think Lady gave it to him. What happened to you? Come on. That's what happens after seven days at sea. <laughs> oh, your poor eye. Look at that. That's terrifying. Can you open it? Is it like stuck? He fell asleep in the cockpit and then a wave threw him off and he hit his knee really hard. His throat is hurting and he's been hand steering for, I don't know, 20 hours. Everything's wet. Oh yeah, everything's super wet and I think we're getting rain. Okay, yeah. Everything's wet, I know. Everything's horrible. Yeah, it's a, it's a great start to this adventure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't want to anymore. It's only 120 nautical miles, so less than 24 hours. Oh, you come outside and things start beeping. I look so forward to arriving. Guys, I'm so done. I hate it. This was horrible. When I was sitting here with Andrew last night, I saw something fly by. Yeah. Hit the hydro vein really hard. Yeah. And then it was gone. Yeah. It sounded really spongy. We figured it was a fish. It's a piece of uh, slimy. Yeah. All so pieces. that that thing saved me from probably <laughs> having getting hit in the face by a massive fish. <laughs> oh, so many things happen. Hello. I was auch nur sagen, sag mal hallo. Yesterday was a bit tough. Uh, the, the waves increased. The wind was up to 25 sustained so we weren't balanced enough for the course we had to take so the hydrovane didn't manage completely so then i turned on the autopilot as well i worked for maybe half an hour and then uh, i kept hand steering the rest of the day um, into the night it went a bit better but once in a while you get these gusts that then push the boat windward so <laughs> and steered <laughs> through half the night and then Andy helped out and then I fell from the sitting area in the cockpit onto the floor of the cockpit and I hurt my knee oh, now I have a, a wounded hand due to a burn a pink eye a cough and a broken knee and all I wanted was get to Cape Verde and have fun so it's uh, it hasn't it hasn't been great, I must say. 120 miles. Yeah, guys, let's go. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Don't die on me in these last 24 hours. This boat looks horrifying. We still need to make three food. I'm not really sure how to do any of it. I've got to rip off rice cakes with peanut butter, honestly. Somebody's happy. I find it hard to get through the day. See, things move so much and I 
I'm I'm so hungry. You try to make an egg? Ah, no. I will try to uh, peel some potatoes. I need potatoes. I can do that. I just really want my legging and my onesie to be dry. So when I put that on, I'm warm and I'm freezing right now. Last day. Not gonna lie, it was kind of tough. Really not what we expected. We expected uh, to sit here in uh, shorts and have sun around us. I mean, we're way south now. But instead, we have stirred seas, pink eye, bruises. We're tired. What do you have? A cold. Maybe is the one who's who's the chippiest at the moment. We just hold on to dear life. It's just <coughs> one more night, and around four in the morning we should arrive Mindelo Anchorage. We're just gonna drop um, her preserved a birth for us. It was really nice having him as shore support. He wrote us lots of information about weather, about medication, and um, yeah. That's it, that's the Cape Verde crossing. Hope you like it. We, we did. <laughs> And it said 14 hours for like one and a half hours. Oh, shit. One and a half hours later, it still said 14 hours. I was like, oh, oh man. Thank you for some less. Normal life. I remember this one time when my parents took me on a roller coaster for seven days. Good <laughs> stuff. Man, this fridge definitely smells worse than you did. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it does, mate. No, I swear. This fridge definitely smells worse than you did. It's the cauliflower. It is the cauliflower, I can There's no oil in there, that's that's quite fluffy. Yeah, you did do it, but you washed later than I did. I showered a day after you. My armpits still smell great. I've exercised every day. Grow my beard out a bit. This works out quite nicely. <laughs> Before you set off on this trip or now? No, I generally in my entire life, I never wanted something to end so badly. <laughs> oh, right. I think that fish would have turned the tide. He could have changed our lives. <laughs> you, should have, you should have seen last night when he fell off the thing. Oh, that yeah. was so funny. <laughs> it's like it was it was unfortunate because he did he was, he was sleeping. Like he was full of passed out and he just went boom like straight over to the other I side. heard the bang. I was wondering what it was. <laughs> Honestly, I was like I was, when I fell when I fell I I, I knew I was falling. I just no motion. I just, I just I just hoped to catch something, and then I grabbed. I think I grabbed the winch, and then I just bam! I hit the I hit that stupid thing in the middle there with my knee, and I just lied there. I was like too tired to get up, still asleep. He, he stayed there for about twenty seconds. He was like resting on my leg, and I knew what he was thinking. I, I looked at him, <laughs> like he was just like, 
<laughs> I was like, have you hurt yourself? He was like, yes. I was like, have you hurt yourself badly? He was like, no, annoyingly. <laughs> One more night, one more night of low batteries, IAS conking out, no moonlight, canned soup, and waves so high they make radar go bleep bloop, or when every one of our friends in the Anchorage has COVID. We're likely to approach the island before sunrise, so we need to slow down even more. There's current funneling through the island's channel, and we haven't caught a fish yet. That fish could have changed our lives. in the channel, the goal is to hug the rugged coast until we can curl around into the anchorage. It's a big one scattered with wrecks and industrial heavy ships. And in between some cruisers on their little boats doing their best to not be stuck in Mindelo forever. We make our way into the channel and approach the anchorage, drop anchor and fall asleep. The next few days we recover, prep the boat for the big jump and wait patiently for our weather window. Waking up here is different. You can smell the time of day. Fishing boats, sewage dumps, diesel generators and garbage trucks. And right at the bay, a little cruiser's enclave. Some floating pontoons and a sailor's bar. The contrast is quite visible. It takes a day or two longer to check into the country. The immigration officer that stamps every passport has COVID. You can feel that life is a bit more rough and real and death is quite close to you when you see people slowly dying on the street and one day they're just gone. We have kids patiently waiting at our restaurant table to nag more meat off of our chicken wings after we're done. And they in turn give the bones to starving street dogs. It's tough to take an expensive camera out and have it point at the poorest of the city. And it's eye-opening. On the other hand, Mindelo is quite vibrant and alive, with restaurants and bars and markets, and thank God pharmacies that hand out antibiotics without prescriptions. That solves mine and Levi's eye infection in a day. in Cape Verde for a few days now and we just managed to get the boat back up to date like fix a few things that were broken clean up and uh, kind of sort ourselves out and uh, now it's time to do the last few jobs Alex just went to shore to drop off Andy because we don't all fit together in the dinghy unfortunately so I'm waiting out here until he put Andy ashore and then we bring all the laundry and uh, go to the pharmacy get a few last things check out where the veggie market is because we've been here then before we leave about one and a half weeks so we need to stock up on some veggies again hello hello lime thank you alright This is where everybody comes together. The Ark and all the cruisers. Hi, Andy! <laughs> I thought of almost everything. Except for the carrier. So now Alex has to go back and get that. Because, uh, this little guy got really heavy already, so it's impossible to carry him without the carrier. So, sorry, babe. Alex! Hello! Can I still be claim baby brain on this one? Maybe. When you arrive, there's this little shop in Unitel where you can get um, 100 gigabytes of internet for 50 euros. So that's really good. It's right outside the marina. This is how we keep contact with the world. 
then right across from Unitel there is a supermarket it's called Fragata. And then you can just land your dinghy on the beach here, right here, and go to the gas station to get some gasoline or petrol or diesel. And you can also exchange your gas bottles right over there. So everything right there. And we are anchored right over there. Like where else do they sell gas bottles under a palm tree? It's pretty nice. <laughs> and then it's the laundromat. By now, we're getting a bit stir crazy. It's day seven and the outboard engine dies on us. We have to do a few more runs to town and our weather window opens in three days. Maybe sailing Sunday can taxi us once or twice, who knows. Mandy gets back into provisioning mode and makes sure we're not starving. Next to not sinking and keeping the boat moving forward, food management will be the most important thing during the crossing. We need to eat three times a day for another 20 days. Altogether, that is 180 meals. Everyone on board stays healthy. We dodge getting sick as all of our buddy boats fall ill one after the other. If one of us gets sick, and then the next one, and then the next one, we will be stuck here forever. And while Mindelo is good to us, the thought of not being able to leave drives us nuts. At the same time, we're getting more nervous by the day as we approach our departure. So how are you feeling about the upcoming deck? Pretty excited, a little bit apprehensive maybe too. I mean, the last one was pretty hectic, pretty crazy. So I'm a little bit less excited because of that, because I'm afraid it might be a bit like that again. But the funny thing is that the other boats that had really good trips down here are looking forward a lot because they hope it's gonna be like that and they think it will be like that. And the ones that had a bad trip have the same thing we have, or I have, like a bit more apprehensive because, yeah, I guess you compare it to the last one. So, excited and a bit nervous, to be honest. Yeah, we're gonna leave on Tuesday, so that's in a, in a day, not tomorrow, but the day after. And we have quite a lot of boats here in the Anchorage that are coming with us. We've been in this Instagram group, talking to oh, yeah, okay, yes. I'm talking to quite some people and I think one or two already left and the rest is all planning to go on Tuesday and that would be as for now Nafika Sailing, Sailing Sunday, Kourou, uh, Millennial Falcon. Um, there's actually a couple more boats that we've just heard that are also leaving on Tuesday so we might end up leaving with like 10 boats or something. That's gonna be pretty cool that's not just us. I'm excited about that part, that we like have loads of buddy boats out there. Join us next time when we untie the lines again and finally embark on our 20-day journey across the big blue ocean. Find out if we've made a huge mistake, if we should give up, if we should keep going, if it gets any better than this, if we see any signs of life. Let us know in the comments what makes you happy and if you called your mama. Leave a like and see you soon.